to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about creative people leveraging their brilliance to create their own opportunities. I aim to show you what's really possible when you shut down the chorus of fear and lean into your genius zone. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting keepchasingthestars.com backslash podcast. This episode of Pimp Your Brilliance is sponsored by the Pimp Your Content Playbook. The Pimp Your Content Playbook helps you create, remix, and repurpose your content in less time. Use these plug and play templates to streamline your content creation process, get more mileage out of the content you're already creating, eliminate overwhelm, and fill your social media queue. To grab your copy of the Pimp Your Content Playbook, visit pimpyourcontent.com. This is episode 24. For more information or for show notes, you can find them at keepchasingthestars.com backslash 24. Hey guys. Hi. It's been a couple of weeks, but I needed a little bit of a break, but I'm back. And today is going to be the first in a series of podcast episodes that I'm calling the Better Content Creation Series. I get a ton of questions about content, specifically how to make better content and how to make content that sells, and just content, content, content. How do you make time to be more consistent with content? A lot of content questions. And so I felt like this would be the perfect time to answer some of those questions and give you guys helpful tips and information, strategies that I actually use to create content consistently, content that looks nice, and ultimately content that helps you sell. Because if you are any type of a creative, you have a side hustle, a budding business, anything that you're doing right now, you are creating content. We are all content creators at this point. Whether you're snapping, you're using Insta stories, you're using Facebook, you're tweeting, you're, whatever you're doing, if you're doing it online and you're putting information out there, you are a content creator. You're a content creator whether you're consciously aware of it or not. So your best bet is to start creating content that is not just good, but content that's great. So for the first episode in this series, I want to talk about the anatomy of great content because it's not enough to just create good content anymore. So before I start breaking down the the anatomy of a great piece of content, I want to point out something really important. Good content gets people in the door. Great content makes them pull out their wallets. And this is a very important distinction to make because we are surrounded by a lot of good content. Like I just said a few seconds ago, everyone online is a content creator. So we're all fighting to be discovered in a sea of damn good content. But good content isn't enough to just get the job done. If your content doesn't inspire your audience to take action beyond a click or a like, it's not great content. And that's not to say that every piece of content that you create needs to sell, sell, sell. But a combination of your best content should prime your audience to buy. It should have your audience engage with you. It should help you build community. So your content needs to be great. And great content encourages your audience to share it, subscribe to your list, register for your webinars and your challenges. Great content makes people take the next step. And that is the key. So great content is the difference between somebody seeing something that you posted and scrolling by and them seeing something that you posted, stopping reading and then taking some type of action. It doesn't matter if it's a sign up button or if it's a buy now button, your content instills trust in your audience. That is why you should always strive to make great content and get out of the realm of relying on content that's just all right. So please, 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 let's agree right now to stop posting just for the sake of posting. And we all know we do this where it's like, oh, I haven't posted anything on Instagram for three days. And so now we're going to toss up a post. Don't do that. Because chances are, if you're doing it like that, it's not great content. It's just good. And it's going to fall flat anyway. So your content really needs to be thoughtful. And your content is not just limited to blog posts. Content is any medium, written, video, audio, pictures that's used to tell your brand story or share your message. Creating stellar content isn't hard. And so that's why I'm going to break down the anatomy of content. And this applies to a range of mediums. Like I said, written, audio, video, 
photographs, Insta stories. Here's how I break down what a good piece of content looks like. The first thing is great content is visually appealing. Come on now. We consume with our eyes first. Your eyes are the gatekeepers of your constant of your content consumption. So if a piece of content doesn't hold visual appeal, we're less likely to interact with it. When you see a piece of content, especially on platforms like Instagram and Pinterest or Snapchat, where visuals are really, really important, we make a judgment about the quality of that piece or the quality of that content just by looking at it. And we judge whether we think it's high quality. We judge whether or not we think it's useful. You pass a lot of judgments in just a few seconds. So don't let poor visuals scare off your audience or color their opinion about your brand before they've had a chance to consume your content. And here's where I appeal to my design challenge friends. If you're unable to hire somebody to design really great visuals for you, please don't try to go and get Photoshop or some other complicated design program that you don't know how to use and start putting things out. Use Canva. Canva is an excellent option. It's free. I mean, you can get a lot of mileage out of the free version of Canva. I even use Canva on occasion. And they have a paid version that gives you additional features. But there are so many free or low-cost templates available within Canva. You can create everything from social media graphics to infographics, presentations for slides, letterheads for... I didn't even know what you'd be sending a letter for, but there's there's a lot there. You can create flyers. I definitely suggest that you use Canva and then Canva because it's so awesome and they want you to use their product. They have a free design school that will teach you the basics of design. So you can do a lot with Canva. So at this point, I'm going to say there's no excuse to have anything less than beautiful visuals because Canva is available to everybody. The next thing a great piece of content should have is it should be well organized. Poor graphics aren't the only thing that's killing your content's visual appeal. This also includes formatting. So I'm talking about mostly text formatting, but good text formatting can be the difference between somebody reading your content or not reading it at all. To increase your audience engagement with your written content, use proper formatting rules. So this includes simple things like making sure your body text is uniform in size. So all one size, your font, like in paragraphs, don't have Don't start the paragraph with a super large font. And then by the end, it's like really tiny letters. That's off-putting and that's weird. So make sure your text is uniform in size and help your readers get through your longer pieces of content by using headings and bullet points where it's appropriate. So break up huge chunks of text by creating shorter paragraphs. Thinking about trying to keep your paragraphs around four sentences or less. This also comes into play on Instagram as well. I know if somebody has just like a short paragraph blurb or something, I'll read it. But if they have, I have to open up the more option and it's just a blob of text. I'm less likely to read it because one, it's not skimmable. And that's why we look for that when we're reading long pieces of content. We're looking for natural breaks inside of the content so that we can skim it and see like, do we actually want to read this? So if you want to increase your engagement on Instagram, or you want to increase the likelihood that people are reading your blog post that you're spending all this time writing, make sure that you break up your text and use proper formatting, bullets, heading, where appropriate. The goal here is to make your work look well thought out and high quality at a glance so that more people will interact with it. So do yourself a favor and use proper formatting. Plain and simple. Number three. Great content is relevant and relevancy is huge. Gone are the days of blogging or creating videos just to have something to publish. And remember, at the beginning of this episode, I made you promise that we were not going to be publishing things just for the sake of publishing them. So is the content that you're creating relevant to both your audience and your overall brand? If it isn't, don't publish it. And if you think about it, your favorite brands have this on lock. Think about any brand that you really love. Like think about your favorite YouTuber, your favorite Instagrammer, your favorite account. I bet you they are very, very hyper aware of what their audience wants from them 
and they continuously put out great content that reflects that and keeps them coming back. I can think of some of my favorite Instagram accounts, um, Studio Muchi and Studio DIY, The Mask Love. These are people who have like that really beautiful, bright, rainbow, colorful aesthetic down and all their content is well lit. It's very clear. The colors are very punchy and I can just scroll for days through their content because it's just all so beautiful. It's very visually appealing and it feels relevant to me as a person who loves crafts and DIY and really colorful things. So I continuously scroll through their content because I think it's great and it it reflects some of the things that I like personally. So these are some things that you have to think about when you're creating content. That doesn't mean like, for example, Instagram, you have to have a super, super curated feed and it all has to be so well organized and, you know, keeping with these same color palettes and you keep this pattern. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like your content needs to be relevant to your audience. So if you do DIY crafts, then the majority of your content should reflect that. If you're helping people grow their businesses, the majority of your content should reflect that. Notice I said majority. It doesn't have to be all, but the majority of it should be relevant to what your audience is looking for. So people need to relate to their struggles, their pain points, their issues to your solutions. So your content should be telling us what is the solution you have? Like what's in it for me? And if they can't find that on your your platforms, if that's not something that they can see and catch at a glance, they're going to click over to the next person. So make sure as much as possible, you try to stay on brand and you keep your content relevant to what your audience or your community likes. For example, if you're a health and a wellness coach, your Instagram feed should reflect that type of lifestyle. If you're a health and wellness coach and I go to your Instagram feed and every other post is you at McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or Wingstop. Listen, I love these places as much as you do but I did not come to your health and wellness page to see you eat fast food. I want to know about your healthy lifestyle. I want to see pictures and videos of what you're eating that's helping you maintain this healthy lifestyle. Not the trash food that I'm eating at home. I have enough evidence of what not to do by myself. But, you know, my point is make sure that your content is serving the needs of your audience, not just your own personal needs keep it. That's how you stay relevant. That's how you keep your content relevant. So something that you should ask yourself before you create your next piece of content, ask yourself, does this speak to my audience? If the answer is no, don't publish it. The fourth point to this is a great piece of content should be actionable. The easiest way to gain your audience trust is to help them solve their problems. In fact, that's the exact reason you're in business, whether you have a full-time business or a side hustle or a budding business, you're in business to solve people's problems. You saw a problem and hopefully you created a solution to fix it. You can and you should be using your content to help your audience achieve small wins. So how does that look in a piece of content? Making sure that your content is actionable. When you create actionable content, That gives your audience a takeaway that they can practice or apply right now. So this is something that they can say, okay, Monique said these five points are things that I need to do to make sure my content is great. And now when you sit down and create a piece of content, you're going to run through these five things and you're going to assess like, okay, is my content visually appealing? Is it well organized? Is it relevant? Is it actionable? And you're going to say like, check, 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 or, you know, maybe two checks and you're missing a step, but that's a small win that I'm giving you. Like this podcast episode is me giving you five things that you can run against the content that you're creating to decide whether or not your content is a great piece of content. So that's what I mean by actionable content. It gives your audience steps or a really quick win that they can apply right now. They don't need to wait weeks. They don't have to jump through hoops to get the answer the details are laid out right there in the content and providing these quick fixes show your audience that you can get them results. So here are some examples of actionable content ideas. 
writing a step-by-step breakdown, showing someone how to batch schedule their social media updates for the week. So if you know you're a blogger, doing that step-by-step breakdown, those tutorials, those are great ways to deliver actionable content to your audience. Say you are a fitness guru, creating a video demonstrating how to do a burpee with proper form. That's a great piece of actionable content. At the end of that, they can say, okay, you know, I can go practice doing this burpee with proper form. And that's a quick win for them. If you are somebody who's in the health and wellness space, taking a picture of all the ingredients that you include in your smoothie recipe or your smoothie bowl with a short caption showing how you assemble it is, again, another small win that you can deliver to your audience if they are interested in trying out, you know, healthy breakfast options. These are all quick and simple solutions to minor problems, but they build your audience's trust in your abilities. And that's one of the key things to selling more online. People have to believe that you can give them results. And the best way that you show them that you can give them results is by providing tips and actionable content that they can try out before they invest money into whatever it is that you're selling. And then the last step is great content includes a call to action. A great piece of content tells your audience what to do next. So don't leave them hanging, give them some directions. And this can be subscribing to your YouTube channel, downloading a content upgrade, buying your new ebook. There are plenty of options, but you want your audience to do something while you have their attention. So you're creating all this content for a purpose, and that is you want to grab your audience's attention. You want to tell them what you would like them to do next. And you need to do that quickly because we all have really short attention spans and you will not have the attention of your audience for an extended amount of time. So if they're consuming your content and they're enjoying it, make sure you give them a call to action at the end that helps move interested members of your audience up a level on the audience relationship spectrum. So you have some people who are, let's say, followers on your Instagram account. That's great. That's cute. But you know how we all talk about how follower numbers are vanity metrics and they're not, they don't really show engagement. You can have 10,000 followers but maybe only 1,000 of them are engaged. And that's not terrible, but you want to make sure that you get as many of those 10,000 followers to go from just following you to actually being on your email list. You want them to take a next step. Every time your audience takes a next step, that builds the relationship factor between you and them a bit more. They trust you more. They trust you enough to give you their email address. They trust you enough to join a challenge They trust you enough to buy your ebook. They trust you enough to invest in a course that costs a couple hundred dollars. Each time they make one of those steps, that's moving them up the customer relationship spectrum. So calls to action are a great way to deepen your relationship with your audience because engaged members are looking to take the next step. Anybody who's engaged in your audience, if they really like you and they really enjoy your content, They're looking for other ways to connect. They're looking for ways to deepen their relationship with you. So make sure that you're using call to actions and you're using paths that help them move their relationship forward with you. So those are my five steps. Just to recap, it is make content that is visually appealing. It's well-organized, relevant, actionable, and includes a call to action at the end. And those are the five pieces that make up the anatomy of a great piece of content. So as I mentioned earlier, if you create a piece of content and you can tick the box next to all five of these pieces, then chances are, if you've invested some time and effort into it, you have a great piece of content on your hand and you should definitely be sharing that out with your audience as much as possible. Because... Producing great content is the fastest way to gain influence and that coveted trust factor with your audience. So if you really want to stand out in a sea of sameness, make sure that your content is stellar and it's great and that people consuming it know what to do next. So now that you know what a great piece of content looks like, how do you feel your content measures up? I would love to know the answer to that. You can hit me up on Instagram at Star Chasers Only and let me know.
And before you go, don't forget to check out our sponsored product, the Pimp Your Content Playbook. You can learn more information and grab your own copy by visiting pimpyourcontent.com. And that's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening. If you love the show, make sure you grab the Be Brilliant Guide where I share the keys to success for my most popular guests. Download it at keepchasingthestars.com backslash brilliant. Now go out there and pimp your brilliance.